Welcome back. This will be part four of the solar system animation tutorial series in Maya. Last video we talked about how to organize our scene with moving pivot points, parenting, deleting the history, and freezing the transforms in order to be able to set up our scene so it can animate successfully. So we're going to do four different types of animation. This video will discuss uh, the basics for animation and then how to set up the rotate based animation for the planets. Uh, and then the next videos we'll talk about how to do scale, movement, and a path constraint animation. So uh, Maya runs based off of or creates animation by what's called keyframe animation. So we have our timeline down here at the bottom. Uh, and our timeline uh, is uh, 24 frames per second. So every 24 frames that you see, that's one second of uh, time. Uh, so right now there's 120 frames visible. I also have the playback controls over here on the left. There's not a record, but there is a play and stop or play and reverse and stop. So we're not recording the animation. We are setting what this object is meant to do on a particular frame. We are then moving the frame to a different frame time. And then we are changing the attribute of that object and then setting another keyframe. So if you follow that step process, you'll create animation. Uh, and we are creating keyframes over time in our timeline and then hitting the play button to play back that animation. So um, that's how animation works in Maya. One thing to make sure we need to set up is select the little orange character running away from a cog button in the bottom right of the UI. This is the preferences window. It'll look like this. Uh, you can also get to this by going to Windows, Saves and Preferences and Preferences. But this bottom button down here, the orange character, opens up the Time Slider Preferences. And if it's set as default to play every frame, when I hit play it's going to be much faster than real time. It's about 60 frames per second or something like that. Um, so we need to make sure the playback speed is set to 24 FPS 1x. That means 24 frames per second. Um, so make sure in the preferences we change the playback speed to 24 frames per second. So that way when you hit play it should follow uh, every 24 frames as one second. Okay. All right, we have some other uh, UI elements down here. So. We have a slider bar, kind of like a web browser slider bar. And this is showing you a smaller area. So the smaller gray bar is from 1 to 120. So it's only showing you 121 frames. If I click on the smaller square on the right of that and drag that to the right, I can drag that to show how many frames are in my entire timeline. So that would be 200 frames. So as default, it's only showing you the specific timeline, 120 frames. That's what this box right here shows, the last frame on the visible timeline. The box to the right of that says 200. That's the last frame on the entire timeline that's been created. The box on the boxes on the left, if you drag that slider in some on the left square, uh, the right side box shows you the first visible frame in the visible timeline, 62. Uh, and then if you look at the far left box there, it says one. That's the first frame in the entire timeline. Now we have as many frames as what we want to add. This isn't, isn't the only amount of frames that we can add. We can add an infinite amount of frames in the positive value and the negative value. So what we're going to do is take this third box that says 120 as default, and I'm going to change that to 360. What we're going to try to create here is a... Uh, overall loopable animation. So within the timeline from frame 1 to 360, the entire animation is going to loop as much as possible. Loop as in repeat as it gets back to frame 1 in the exact same as much as we can position as what we have to begin with. So uh, let's talk about how to animate. Um, I've done a little bit of math so that way we can plan out how we want everything to rotate. I know I'm gonna need 360 frames, so I want all of my planets to orbit at least once throughout 360 frames. Now every planet should continue to make orbits around the sun uh, until frame 360. 
So I don't want to just rotate Mercury around once and let it sit there unnaturally and then Venus rotate around once and then it sits there unnaturally. Every planet's going to continuously rotate until frame 360. So what, how I can set this up is Pluto's the furthest away. So we'll zoom out so we can see Pluto for a second. Pluto's the furthest away from the sun. So I want that to rotate around the sun or orbit around the sun once over 360 frames. So increments, that's what frame uh, I am uh, putting every revolution. So Pluto is only going to rotate around once. So it's going to take it 360 frames to rotate around one revolution. That is 360 degrees. Neptune moving one planet in is going to rotate around twice over 360 frames. So every 180 frames it's going to rotate around 360 degrees. So what that means is on frame 360, Neptune is going to rotate around twice. That is 720 frames. So basically I am increasing this so that way every planet closer to the sun is going to rotate around more and more times. Um, this is not going to be to scale of the real world time and that would take way too long for us to watch an animation. So this expedited sped up uh, timeline is going to be visually appealing and interesting, but also still look natural. So I'm going to use this uh, text graphic that I've created uh, to uh, rotate around all of my planets around the sun. So let's go over here to uh, Mercury. And what I'm going to do with Mercury is I move the pivot point to the center of the sun. And all I'm going to do is just rotate it around in the X axis. Uh, however many degrees I say, so over 360 degree, 360 frames, Mercury is going to spin around however many times I want it to. Um, so I want this to spin around over 300, 360 frames, 12 revolutions. So I just did some basic math. 12 times 360 is 4,320. Uh, that's every 30 frames, it's going to have one revolution around the sun. So to do that, I don't need to go in here on frame 1 and 30 and then put 360 degree change and then go to 60 and add 360 and then go to 90 and add 360. Instead, the easiest way to do this and the smoothest way to do this is to create a keyframe on frame 1 and then a keyframe on 360, uh, frame 360. So that way there's only two keyframes per planet. To create a keyframe in Maya, I'm going to select the object. I'm going to make sure I'm on the right frame, so I'm going to move to frame 1, and I'm going to hit the S key, S for set key. Okay. So two things are going to happen. Uh, the channel box, make sure you have your channel box visible. The translate, rotate, scale, and visibility will have a red box beside it that says, hey, this object has keyframes associated with this attribute. And then the second thing is in the timeline, there's a red vertical tick mark that shows me that on frame 1, this object has a keyframe. Now one thing to remember is that keyframes are object specific. So if I select the sun, that keyframe on frame one is no longer visible. That's because the sun doesn't have any keyframes right now. Only Mercury has keyframes. So animation is object specific. You create a keyframe for one object, it only affects that object. So step process, I'm gonna select the object, I'm going to go to the first frame and hit the S key, and that key is my main attributes. Next step, I'm going to move the frame, move to frame 360, and I'm going to change the attributes. So I'm going to rotate this around. I'm just spinning my mouse around to rotate it around um, until I can get close to the value, or what I can do is look at my chart and just type in 4320. So we'll do that. So for rotate Y, 4320. Okay, that's going to look like it's not going to animate it because it puts it right on top of the original position, but that's what I want. I want it to loop around back to this original position. So with rotate Y, I have changed that attribute to 4320. I'm going to click out off of the value so I can click back where it says rotate Y and then hit the S key. So that creates a second keyframe on frame 360. Now if I scrub in my timeline, I can click in my timeline and drag back and forth. You can see that there's motion created. If I zoom back to frame one and hit play, we can now watch Mercury orbit around the sun 
and it's going to orbit around 12 times until it gets to frame 360 and it's going to loop back to the original position and uh, stop and restart back on frame one. Now what it is actually doing is slowing down as it gets back closer to frame 360. We'll come back in a later video and correct that. So let's go back to frame one. We're going to do the same thing with Venus. What's our value for Venus? We want Venus to rotate around 3240 degrees, 3240 degrees. So with Venus's object selected, the pivot points in the center of the sun, we're going to make sure we go to frame one and hit the S key. We're going to move the timeline frame to frame 360. We're going to change our attribute 3240, I believe it was the right value. Yep, 3240. Click on the name Rotate Y again and hit the S key. If you follow that step process, it'll create animation every time. So this should rotate Venus around nine times. You can see it's lagging behind Mercury because Mercury is spinning around 12 times, whereas Venus is spinning around nine times. All right, so let's keep working our way around. Go back to frame one. I'm going to go into the outliner and select Earth. And on frame one, we'll hit the S key. Let's go see what our value is. Earth is going to spin around eight times at 2880. So I'm going to move my frame after I create a keyframe on frame one to frame 360. Type in rotate Y 2880. Click rotate Y again and hit the S key. So now we can watch the Earth move around. Now what that's really going to do is the Earth looks like it's going to chase the moon. So let's slow it down. Earth is, looks like it's chasing the moon. We'll come back and adjust the moon here in a minute. Let's go up to Mars. So Mars on frame one, we're going to hit the S key. See what our value is. Mars is going to rotate around six times, so that's 2160. So on frame one, Mars, we're going to hit the S key. We're going to move to frame 360. Uh, 2160 I believe hit the S key again and now watch Mars animate around all right so sometimes animation can be created with some simple math other times it's just a visual way that we create motion uh, this is Jupiter Jupiter is gonna go around five times at 1800 so on frame one with Jupiter selected I'm gonna hit the S key I'm gonna move to frame 360 and type in 1800 for rotate Y. Select the rotate Y attribute name again and hit the S key. We'll watch Jupiter spin around. Okay, so that's going to go around five times. All right. Um, I'm going to go to Saturn, move to frame one, hit the S key, change the frame to frame 360, figure out our value, four times at 1400 or 1440. 1440. Uh, click rotate Y and hit the S key again. So we're only creating two keyframes, one on frame one and one on frame 360 for each planet. We're allowing that math to do all the animation for us. So there's Saturn rotating around as well. Now we're starting to get a solar system uh, animation. We'll go to Uranus, go to frame one, hit the S key. Let's see, Uranus is going to go around three times, which is 1080. Uh, we're going to change the frame to frame 360, type in 1080, click rotate Y and hit the S key. We'll watch Uranus animate around now. Okay. Uh, make sure that it is going to loop properly. I know it is because I've, I've done the math, but scroll back through and make sure that everything does align back properly. Uh, this is Neptune. Let's go to frame one with Neptune selected, hit the S key. Let's go see what our value is. 720, we're going to ro rotate Neptune around twice over 360 frames. So frame one, hit the S key with Neptune selected, move to frame 360, 720 value, rotate degrees. Click rotate Y again and hit the S key. Watch Neptune rotate. It's this one right here. Okay, so that's going to go around twice over 360 frames. There comes Neptune. Let's select Pluto. Let's go back to Pluto, uh, frame one, and hit the S key. Pluto is going to go around once over 360 frames, so let's move to frame 360, and type in 360 for rotate Y. And select rotate Y value or attribute, and hit the S key again. So that's all of our planets orbiting around the sun. 
I'll let it play for a second and then we'll go back and do our animation for the moon rotating in the opposite axis around the earth. Everything should come back to a standstill on frame 360 and restart. So we want to make sure that animation does loop. That's why I chose every 360 frames. Uh, all of my keyframes are on that frame. All right. So the last thing to do before wrapping up this video is we want to make sure that the moon isn't like leading the earth around. That's what it's doing right now. So we can do that by adding a negative value uh, to the rotate of the earth or the earth's moon. Sorry. So the earth was 2880. Um, so if we double that, uh, which should be, let's see, calculator. 2880 times 2, 5760. Um, so I'll add this one down here. Moon uh, over 360 frames, I think. Uh, so that was, Earth goes around 8, so this would be 16 times, or really negative 16. And this would be negative 5760. Okay, so that'll probably be like increments of 15 or something like that. Uh, close to it, 15, something like that. Maybe 12. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it in the negative axis. We've been putting positive values in our rotate. So that way it'll rotate in the opposite direction so our camera can see the motion. So with the moon selected, I'm going to go to frame 1 and hit the S key. And then I'm going to go to frame 360 and type in that value, negative 5760. So rotate Y, negative 5760. Okay, looks like it's going to put it right back in the same spot. Let's click rotate Y again and hit the S key. So on frame 360, it's going to rotate negative 5760. Let's click off and see if we can watch that. There you go. So now the moon looks like it is orbiting around the Earth while the Earth is orbiting around the sun. All right, so that'll wrap up this video of how to create a rotate-based animation of the planets around the sun.